everyone. How you doing? Hope y'all are doing well. Happy Thursday. Okay, let's see here. All right, what do we got? Hey, Java Man. Hey, Autistic Shill. Hi, Steffi. Hey, Sally B. Hey, Parm. Hey, Ginger. Hey, Mikhail. When is her next court date? And is the case between JLR and Uni still going? Yes, the case between JLR and Uni is still going. That much I know. Um, I, I actually um, reached out for an update not too long ago. Um, basically, they're just stuck waiting, JLR side, because Uni and Uni Rage are just acting like this isn't actually happening. They're not responding to shit. They're not adhering to any of the, the court scheduling appointments or anything. They're just ignoring it. So basically pretty soon, they're probably going to uh, petition for a default judgment or whatever. So um, I don't know. That was the last update. Um, it, as far as Katie goes, I think it's April or something is, is the next date. Uh, excuse me. Okay. Um, hey, Jer. Hi, Aaron. <laughs> that sounds so weird to say, so I don't care. Okay. So um, I was scrolling around on YouTube today, and I came across a new video from Go Harder, which is Molly's channel there. And I saw that she and Bullhorn Betty had a falling out, first of all. Yay. I'm, I'm not a big fan of Bullhorn Betty, so um, good for you, Molly. <laughs> but, um, I thought that was interesting. But that got me thinking, though. It just got me thinking about a whole bunch of shit. And then it dawned on me, like, wait a minute. This shit that Katie Joey's doing with this family, this isn't new to her. This isn't news for her. She's done this before. We all saw her do this before. Now, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, let me pull up a few posts here from Katie Joy so you all can see. Well, um, you're going to hear my stomach growl, too. My stomach, I, I haven't felt that good out the past couple of days because my pharmacy, or apparently the whole area here, is out of Ozempic. And um, I'm actually on it for the blood sugar issue. I'm not even on the weight loss dose. But um, I've had to go out, go without it now for almost two weeks. And it's, I don't know, I don't feel so right. So um, it's pissing me off, though. I really would like to get my medicine back and get everything back under control because I don't feel good when my blood sugar is crazy. Um, Okay, so here we go. Let me pull these up. See which one I want to start at because there's so fucking many of them. Crazy. Um, Cardi Cassie. All right, so we'll start here. Yeah, we'll start here. So this is her um, her Instagram. So we're going back two days ago, and here was a post from Katie. It says, Vlada Cristobal has been notified by Flagstaff PD that the records that I requested connected to Garrison Brown's death are in the mail. Why are they in the mail? Why weren't they sent electronically? This is what I don't get. Basically, we're, she's going to go in to explain what it is she's getting. And a lot of this, like the supplementary reports, what those have, those are typed in to a computer and they're sent to like their supervisor and stuff like that. You know, it's, they're made electronic. Why is it that she's waiting on snail mail for this? I, it seems weird to me. There, I mean, it's not like things had to be transcribed or anything, you know? Well, maybe, maybe an interview, but no, probably not. Um, this request has, was made on the same day that we requested the police report. We will be receiving copies of Garrison's final text messages and interviews con police conducted with his roommates and family. The information and video has been redacted and no sensitive information related to his body or condition will be revealed. 
As soon as the information arrives, we will report the findings. Our, re our request was to understand the full context of interviews with witnesses and family as police reports are only summaries and not the whole story. Everything requested is public. Certain things are okay to be public and requested and received, but when it comes to Katie Joy, you can't request it at her. Well, you can, but you can't. Transparency is important, especially when the death occurs after an adult child has been relentlessly bullied by a father on national TV. I have no hope that the Brown family will ever provide truthful information about the incident, about the incident, nor will they ever hold, actually hold Cody accountable for his abuse. Sister Wives has exploited and hidden the abuse of children and women for 18 seasons. The children continue to be abused and many of the women continue to defend and cover for Cody. Members of the family have labeled without a crystal ball evil while co-signing and excusing Cody's abuse. That's what this, this is all about right there. This is the real motivation for what she's doing. She doesn't like the fact that she's been labeled bad guy by, by those who she perceives to be the bad guys. I am specifically looking for details. Yeah, we know what you're looking for. About the conversation with TLC production and what was told to police about this interaction. Janelle stated he sent ominous messages. Those messages are not your business. So. However, I know there's way more to the story than what than what officers wrote in the report. And if there isn't, well, you bet your ass she's going to make it so. TLC is going to try to hide this, and this should not be hidden. Polygamy is illegal and a felony in the United States without a crystal ball. Refuses to be an outlet contributing to normalizing or pushing propaganda for this family. I'm here to stand up for victims of polygamy, even if they can't see it. I'm here to protect you, even if you don't like it. <laughs> Just fucking learn to accept it, bitch. Individuals continuing to promote harmful rhetoric around polygamy and defending abuse witnessed on national TV will be blocked. This was a FOIA request and not an overreach. I'm already blocking. Well, it was a FOIA, but it wasn't a FOIA. It's, it's, yeah, it's close enough to a FOIA. Though. Save your comments telling me how to run my reporting and job. I've already blocked 25 people. Oh, my God. Only 25 people? It must have been a slow day for you. Details will be posted in the coming days. I can't even check the comments in here. Let's check those out real quick because you know she's in them. Yes, it's in the police report. I have heard it. It's, it's, it's disturbing how many people are like cool with her doing this. It really, it's so fucking disturbing. Garrison made clear to production that the show was a catalyst to his mental health decline. He did? You might want to show proof of that. I honestly don't think the message was about Cody. My theory isn't about him trying to contact Cody. My theory is about... is. My theory isn't about him trying to contact Cody. My theory is that he told them that the abuse he suffered on the show in the past season contributed to his mental state declining. That's fucked up. Okay. Exactly. I want to know why Gabrielle left, which family member went to assist, what was said about the estrangement, and what this interaction with TLC was that made Janelle so fearful for Garrison's safety. So she she's going, she's coming for TLC. I wonder, I wonder if TLC knows about this. Come on, pinwheel. Thank you. All right, I'm, I don't care about the comments right now. I'm going to skip over them. So here we have another post from two days ago. She says, I still cannot shake the garrison died by us on the same night that the Apostolic United Brethren, I, I don't know why I can't get that accent right, was exposed for running a militia, which was organized by Robin Brown's brother-in-law. The story got bur buried due here. I, why can't I bury, bury <laughs> due to his death? No outlets reported the Browns family connection to an armed illegal militia. That's crazy. The night Garrison Brown died by us, a &E exposed the Apostolic United Brethren for weapons trafficking and running an illegal militia to defend the group from outsiders and the government. 
Wait, what do you mean they got exposed for this? I, I'm pretty sure that this has been known. I mean, didn't Katie herself do like several posts on this over time? I mean, it's crazy that now they're, this has been exposed or, oh no, it's because A&E exposed it. Okay, because if it, since it was A&E, that's a big deal. But the fact that all these other media outlets probably exposed them doesn't matter. It's A&E. The group was put together by Robin Brown's brother-in-law, Mike Bowles, who was married to Fawn Bowles. Men in the group were, re were recruited into the secret militia and trained in military warfare by a former Green Beret in the mil military. I love that. By a former Green Beret in the military. What other Green Berets are there if not in the military? A former member revealed the group used illegal weapons, silencers, and used AR-15s, which were untraceable. Cody Brown has sold ghost gun kits for AR-15s for years. I was on the hunt of this story when news broke about the S. So what, the S just distracted you from this story? That seems unlikely. It seems to me like the S would have probably made you even more determined to hunt down this story. The episode airs. Garrison dies by ass. The entire story about the militia, legal weapons, and the Brown family ties to the group was completely ignored by the media. Fawn is Robin's sister that is one year younger. Her husband, Mike Bowles, is a bishop in the Mount Pleasant branch of the AUB. I have no idea if this is connected in any way, but I'm making the connections for you. But something feels off. My investigations in the AUB will continue. I believe Garrison had any involvement in the militia. militia. To be clear, the timing is what is very strange. I have heard that Cody's involvement with illegal activities has been a source of serious contention between him and his sons. Several of the adult children refused to be involved in the show due to the promotion of an illegal cult and criminal organization. Garrison would have been way too young to be involved in the group. Cody is known to stockpile weapons. The ghost gun kits he sold are untraceable. A former militia member said the guns were all untraceable. Um, so tell me she deleted it. She deleted it, didn't she? It's all right. It's on Twitter. Yeah, and she's an idiot if she, thinks, if she does for a second think that um, Gypsy is hooking back up with her ex there. Oh, my God, yeah. Because, you know, you don't go get matching tattoos with a friend. You don't. You go and do that with someone who is a little bit more to you than some friend, you know? Anyway, so let me go here. Where is it? <laughs> I gotta look at it. It's so far, shoot. Um, okay, so right here, let me pull this up and share this tab instead. Okay, so here we have, I'm done with the game. Sister Wives is an abusive show that promotes a sex, tra sex and labor trafficking cult. In March 2024, a child relentlessly bullied by the trafficker died by ass. If you support this trafficker and their tra propaganda, unfollow me. I'm blocking every single person telling me to stop exposing a criminal enterprise. You were lied to by family and television. Cody is a sex and labor trafficker, and I will cover or covet whatever for his crimes if that offends you. Unfollow. But comments telling me to stop will only get you blocked. You are supporting abuse. 
police reports aren't private and no journalist you need to be a journalist first boo needs permission to report on a public police report get out of here abuse supporter the fact that you're calling yourself a journalist and trying to do things under the guise of being a journalist, you should know that you're doing more to support this alleged abuse than anyone because you are doing what you're doing under false pretenses. But you are only going to taint and tarnish the, your efforts. So any good that could possibly come from your efforts will come at a cost, a huge cost, bigger than the payment of your efforts. So just saying. So, let me put it there for a second. Let me scroll down a little bit more and then I'm going to move on to my next part. Get some weird shit. Yeah, okay, so I'm just gonna move on. So, and we all seen the post of how she was coming at Cody for his hair and everything, you know, mocking him while sitting at his son's military memorial service, mocking him, but saying, look at how fucking, how he's losing his hair. Maybe someone should tell him about this or whatever. You know, and it's like, that's just kinda, you are obsessed with your hate for this these people. Which, I mean, you can dislike them and you can take serious issue with the things that you've witnessed them do on live TV or not live TV, but on TV. Sure. Get, we get that. But what you're doing now is obsessive. It's it's obsessive, hateful rhetoric. For, for what? Because you feel slighted for some fucking reason? I don't even know what for. It ain't because she cares about the, the quote unquote victims. Because she's using the victims to settle some score to feel like something is just in this situation. But it's not her damage that needs justice. That's not what an advocate does. An advocate doesn't advocate for their own feelings. Okay, they advocate on, on behalf of what the victims want and what they're seeking. And, and, and no matter your feelings, on it, that's just what an advocate does. So if you're not doing that, then you are exploiting the whole situation in my opinion but we all remember though how she did this with um with Letitia Bias right I mean back in 2022 there when Dre McRae's husband Marva McRae attempted to take his own life and I think effectively succeeded just his his body was kept alive for some time afterwards that's it um so what did Katie do? Katie first initially came after the wife. That's what she did. She came after Dre. She blamed Dre. She said that Dre, in fact, had a hand in him doing this. In fact, she even made it sound like that. She, or not, she didn't make it sound like she came right out and said that she thinks that Dre drugged her husband and that Dre did this whole thing and called her murderer. Let's not forget that. But then, because Letitia Bias, Marvon's mother, who found who didn't find out about this except for through social media, mind you. When Letitia just showed showed she didn't want to be that closely involved with Katie. She kind of pulled back a little bit, likely because she could tell that Katie was fucking off a rocker. So when she did that, Katie got mad. So Katie switched gears. Katie then stuck up for the wife. Never mind all that stuff I said about her before. She's the victim here and came after Letitia because someone had to be came after in this story, apparently, because God forbid someone just have done something and that's tragedy enough. No, Katie had to make it turn it into a bigger tragedy and she had to sell fucking views and shit for it. Let's not forget that. So let me pull this up. So I went to her original Facebook page. And, oh, oh, it can switch over here. I didn't know that. Oh, I still have to do this. I have to turn that back on. Yep, I do. Okay. Um, okay, hey, look at that. Okay, awesome. So, okay. So, we're going to skip over this. I don't care what she had to say about my way at this time. But, and these are not, I know they will be in order. That's right. 
but I just typed in Letitia and I'm going with that. So I only want to pull up the stuff with Letitia. So we're going to have to scroll through some shit first. Oh, here we go. Despite claims by Molly, Justin, or anyone else that people have been refunded, that is not true. Letitia has not refunded over $1,000 to multiple parties. Multiple people are discussing filing fraud charges against her with police in Savannah, Georgia. Oh. Oh, so Kay was, in fact, clued into that shit before that happened. Okay, well, that's interesting. Oh, they didn't actually file fraud charges, but, you know, they just made a silly online complaint, which is funny because there were other channels, one in particular, who did videos about this whole fake investigation, but those videos are no longer available to the public. I mean, some are just completely private, and some are just hidden behind their paywall now. That's telling. Anyway, moving on. So, oh, here we go, because everything has to be about her. Molly, a.k.a. Marissa, told her followers that she wants me to drop dead and die because I'm trash and in, and am, I'm evil, miserable woman. And am evil, miserable woman. I can't read her writing half the time. Pinned into a corner over questions about a lack of transparency about fundraising and she attacks. All people want her answer to the questions about where the money is going, which everyone got. Letitia told admin she needed a defense lawyer to hire over possible fraud charges. People can't file against her. That's not exactly what she said. That statement, and, and either way, she wasn't talking about using funds for that. This statement turned into a needed, into she needed a defense lawyer against Andrea. People had no clue one of the lawyers you all were raising money for was to potentially cover criminal charges against Letitia. Yeah, it's because they weren't. Letitia and admin set a tone along with Molly to roast and humiliate anyone that sought a refund. No documents in court were filed by Letitia. Money was raised so she could see her son. She had to travel from Georgia to it was Arizona to see her son, okay? It's hard to do that when, you know, I would have a hard time. I am having a hard time doing that. I'm having a hard time raising money to go to Kansas, okay? So I understand what it's like living paycheck to paycheck. You can't just drop whatever the fuck you're doing and just go miss work for one and then have to pay for travel expenses and lodging and, and all these other expenses, you know? It's hard. Not everyone can do that. Anyway, so that's what she was raising money for in the very beginning. After that, she talked about getting a lawyer, potentially, because she was told that she wasn't allowed to see her son. Well, come to find out, she was actually, they couldn't stop her from seeing her son. So she went, she saw her son. But there's no need. There was a lawyer, lawyer hired, and there was discussions had. And there was actually a filing printed up, but it was never filed because there was never a need to file. So, because she accomplished what it is she set, sought out to do. No documents. Okay. Letitia saw Vaughn without going to court. That's Isn't that ideal? Like That's what people wanted, right? People didn't really want the whole family to be dragged into court, did they, during this time? And it's fucking twisted that people feel slighted that they didn't get to see that happen. The woman who found Letitia's attorney has a felony for impersonating an attorney and multiple theft fraud charge convictions, which I, I find funny because that person, her name was Brittany, um, that person is friends with, with Nanya, with nonsense. I mean, I have screenshots of them in a live chat together, all talking, all friendly and shit like that. And and this Britney person making up all kinds of bullshit about Letitia. So it's funny how it all just kind of comes together like that. The woman who found, oh, okay, we're gonna, people believe money was being spent on a lawyer. Okay. See, this is the shit though that Katie was spreading about a mother who was grieving the loss of her son, who had just effectively took his own life. Effectively, that's what happened. Here, I have a longer video clipped with what happens before this, but I wanted to show you. They're instructing Letitia to remove her bank card and account from Cash App. Yeah, because they didn't trust people to not hack into her shit after how people were coming for her. So... This is all Molly here, right here. But I 
oh, this is exposed. This was when she decided to drag Marvon's father for his legal issues in the past or whatever. Yeah. So this is what she did. She went for this whole family. She dragged, oh, let's not forget this. Okay. This point is separate. Yeah. Um, where is it? Where is it? Okay. So this was a nonsense on the web 2.0's page, for those who don't remember. This is when Katie discovered or came across um, documents, whatever, showing that Letitia had a financial company or whatever, you know, filed, I don't know, I guess court proceeding chart or file, whatever against her. So Katie then shared this with nonsense. The nonsense, of course, had to put it out because nonsense didn't want people to get it confused with anything else going on, with like this alleged um, police investigation going on into the fraud charges or whatever, even though that was non-existent. But, you know, nonsense was just trying to be a good hearted person and just put it out there. So people were made aware of it. So they didn't get it confused with the other shit because like that would happen. Breaking news. Well, not really breaking or shocking. Oh, right there. You show your intent. Just wanting to provide information for transparency purposes. As I know, it'll get twisted. I was alerted that there was a totally separate filing made on Letitia Baez, yada, yada. Okay, so let's look for Katie Joy's comments here, okay? So let me go up one. Okay, there we go. So Katie comments on this thread. Looks like this is for a repossession of a car that she bought in 2017. The complaint alleges that she failed to make payments on the car after purchases. When they went to repossess the car, the found the car was badly damaged and below average for market. The car sold for way less than it should have. She was told for months that she needed to pay them. According to the exhibits, she financed almost $16,000 for the 2013 Sentra in 2017 when they repossessed the car i don't even call it carry body yada yada yeah. not sure if this is the same car that dre and vaughn purchased for her pretty sure you're sure of that because you just said there um according to the exhibits she financed almost 16k for the car well if this was this was the same car that dre and vaughn pur purchased for her then why was she financing anything you know with the agreement that she would make payments or not there okay so and then there's oh then you know, she has to post and share the exhibits you know how nice of her so here we have wasn't this the car that Dream Bond signed for yet it might be they are not listed on the paperwork well then it wasn't that car payments were made for nine months of around four hundred twenty a month then the payment stopped. It could definitely be this car if car it was a 2013 Nissan Sentra bought in 2017. She listed her cab company as her employer, but there's no co-signer. And it's uh Michelle. No, he definitely so did his car. Okay, so she posts more shit. So here now she's talking to directly to Letitia Bias in this thread because Letitia Bias was like, I've had enough of these fucking people talking all this crazy shit about me. And she came in and just kind of flipped a few people off. So without a crystal ball says, Letitia Bias, respond to me. Oh, wait, you won't. Admit you screamed at me over the phone when I did nothing more than share our communication. Like that's not a reason enough to yell at someone over the phone. Like I think it might be. I'm not saying that this will happen, but yeah, it could be something Molly did every day, probably with Letitia's permission, something you don't bother to get. And then I never asked for a refund from you. No, you asked from, for it from GoFundMe. <laughs> you know I didn't. I contacted GoFundMe and they refunded after I showed them proof of your lies. No, after you made up a bullshit story. Then you got mad and encouraged people to dox and harass me. Letitia Bias, admit that I'm not causing you to be ill. Stop your blame game. I was kind and nice to you. You in turn threatened to kill Wynette for speaking to me. Admit it. Wow, like you, you're crazy like that. You're so crazy. Oh my god. Um, oh wait, shit, where'd that go? Damn it, there's more. Damn it.
Man, I'm not the one causing you to be out. Okay. Letitia Bias and then shared something here. I don't, I don't want to pull up anything personal like financial or whatever that she may have posted. Then she says, Letitia Bias, remember when you roasted me up for getting a refund from GoFundMe? You didn't seem to care when I was stocked, threatened, or harassed. In fact, you encouraged the harassment of me and ended on in the DMs. Shame on you, which, no, she didn't. Not even close. Shame on you. Reporting facts isn't harassment. But AIs? AIs allowing people to blame me for your help. I think that means also allowing people to blame me for your help. Come on now, pay the car people for the car you destroyed that got repossessed. So yeah, this is exactly how Katie Joy, amongst others, but we're we're focusing on Katie Joy here. This is exactly how Katie Joy treated treated the mother, the grieving mother of someone who effectively took their own life. So okay, in remind let me remind you that. The mother didn't even find out about this until a post on social media. Like that's that's some crazy shit right there. Um, oh wait, sorry, I had more of that elsewhere. Oh, all right, we're gonna just sidetrack here for a minute. So on a completely separate subject or whatever. In my efforts to find this post, something came up that I found to be quite hilarious. So this is a post from a page called King Crane. I'm guessing it's their, it has something to do with the Carmen Crane people or whatever. But this caught my attention because I was searching because it used to be that that post would come up just from my searching nonsense. Well, I had to actually do a little bit more effort this time to find it. But this came up though instead. King Crane writes, it's funny when people can't take the heat. Your damn sons and daughter aren't even named. Admit you lost. I wonder what your poor grandmother would think. Ashamed of your features and all those track marks shaking my fucking head. Could have just accepted it like nonsense on the web 2.0. But no, you hide, blame others, and forget that over a year ago, Foot talked about how I showed her pictures of you. I, the rest of it, I don't really know or care. I don't, whatever. But what happened between the cranes here and uh, Nonsense on the Web? What is it that Nonsense on the Web just accepted? That's some funny shit. All right, back to the original programming here. Um, let me go back over to here. Wait, it was sharing, right? Okay. Stop sharing. Okay. So we're going to go to one more page here. So I wanted to pull up some of Letitia's posts, like this one right here. Seven a.m. I woke up to the worst heartbreaking and soul snatching news of my life. Please keep my second born in your prayers as he fights for his life. We love you, Marvon. Please wake up, baby. This is how she found out her son was in a coma, and she didn't even find out right away what how that happened. It took a few weeks for her to find out. No, it took her requesting the the police report to learn what exactly happened that landed her son in a coma because the wife wasn't sharing any information, wasn't even talking to that, to that side of the family. This is who Katie took up for eventually after dragging first, but took up for, and this is the woman she decided to come after. And it's, it's sad that she had help of other, you know, content creators, but really it was Katie who got the ball rolling there and Katie who stuck it out even if behind the scenes. So what we're seeing here and now with um, with the Browns, this isn't the first time. And really, do we think it's gonna be the last? I mean, personally, I don't. I mean, two, two times I think it's really setting up a pattern. I just, I just hope we never learn who the, the next person is, but I mean, 
you can hope in one hand and shit in the other and see which one fills up first, you know. Um, I think that's how the saying goes. Anyway, all right, I'm going to check out chat. I haven't been paying attention since I started streaming. So stop sharing. Oh, they jumped. Okay. Yep, that's right. Yeah, she, she, she started the whole, um, the whole I don't know, mob or movement or whatever of coming after Leticia for having, for not having custody of Marvon when he was younger. Um, she, it, 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 after a few years or something, from what I understand, Marvon did move back home with his mother. But before then, while. I guess while well, Leticia just, I mean, she, let's not forget, this was her second kid and she was like 16, you know? Um, and it was her grandmother who had custody of Marvon. So it was Marvon's great grandmother. Um, so it's not like he was adopted out or, or in CPS or some shit like that, you know? He was with family for the time being. But Katie Joy decided to come at this. Well, she's not even really his mother. She doesn't have any right. She it, She's not legally whatever. Like, it, the dude was an adult. Ain't nobody legally it, any fucking spokesperson for him except for his wife, you know? So, but that didn't stop Katie. You know, Katie had to keep throwing that out there. And and people were actually saying to Letitia how they didn't think that she was really his mother. She didn't have a right. Strangers on the fucking inter internet saw Katie doing this. And so, therefore, they thought, oh, it's cool if I do this. And they jumped on it. And then uh, someone decides to make an online complaint about how, oh, I donated money and this person lying or whatever. And the police were like, you know, it's an online complaint form. In fact, if you go to the website and you look up how to make a report and you to do it online, you have to live. Oops. You have to live there or there has to be. I forget what it was. The crime has to have happened in their jurisdiction. This was an internet thing, and the complainer did not live in the state of Georgia, let alone in their jurisdiction. So this was just an online complaint form. No investigation came from this. Nothing came from this. But they didn't stop people from trying to act like and, and report that something was coming from this or that it was an investigation or whatever. And then it was even in the police report. Something was stated about, oh, hours later, we got a phone call or whatever. And it, the person described to have called was was Dre. Why is it that Dre, throughout all of the times recently, or since, you know, Marvon's passing, especially, since she's talked about Marvon's family, why hasn't Dre made mention of the fact that she made a report to Georgia, to Savannah, Georgia police about the fraud that his mother committed or whatever? She's made no fucking mention that she is not aligned herself with any sort of activity. So I kind of question if there was even Dre who called or whatever, made the backup secondary, you know, complaint or whatever. But anyways, the person who made the complaint, this Danielle, whatever the fuck her name was, she's still lying about it because here, I showed this on their stream not too long ago, but I'm going to show it again. So thank, thankfully, Molly caught this and she shared it. That's how I became aware of it. But she, Molly says, I thank you to Feminine and Fierce 2.0 for bringing this issue back to life that I thought was buried a year ago. Miss Letitia Bias, mother, was never a scammer or a con artist. The fake police report against her was done online by a vicious and cruel person who used fake information and filed a fake police report, adding my name to it as if I was her co-conspirator, meaning um, Letitia's co-conspirator. If Miss Letitia was ever a con artist or a scam artist, then how would anybody with a modicum of common sense explain why people were receiving refunds from Miss Letitia? In fact, these vicious people were so cruel at the time that they were requesting donations from Cash App without having had even sent a donation. So in the end, it was actually Marvon's mother 
who was being scanned the whole time. And that is, that's fucking true. Once more, I would like to say thank you to everyone that did generously help out Marvon's family with donations for travel and the legal expenses, sadly, with all of the people that were calling up this lawyer. Her fees went up. But I do know, so she says that her fees went up. That's not what happened. Uh, from what I understand is because the the attorney's office or whatever was having to take time to field all of these calls, that it counted against the retainer. That's what I understand. So it wasn't that her fees went up. Is that her 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 retainer was being utilized, basically. That's my understanding of it. Um, but I do know for sure that Marvon's family was ever so gracious. Okay, we're going to skip to it. Okay. This, this girl, Danielle, actually had the nerve to comment on Feminine's video and put in her comments about the police report. So I reached out to Marvon's mother while it was live this afternoon. And sure enough, now you all can see the proof is in the evidence. So here's what I'm going to show you. So I'm guessing this is under, or this was under um, Feminine and Fierce post or whatever. Or no, maybe. No. I saw this comment on my, oh yeah, on my post. I was wondering if you saw it. Okay. This is Danielle Lee in here. This is the person who filed that bogus complaint. Molly Golightly, none of this is true, LOL. We actually went to court. You're the same person that said I was using a deceased person's name for the report. There's page or profile, whatever. So here's Molly messaging Letitia. Hi, Miss Letitia. It's Molly. Do you remember when that girl, Danielle, made that fake police report claiming that she gave you like $500 and it was a big setup? You went down to the police department and you showed them your ID because you were trying to set, because they were trying to set you up. Do you remember that night? And then you went back the next day and the police said that they didn't want to hear anything about it anymore. It was brought up. Yesterday, and all of a sudden, Danielle popped up, and she's claiming that she went to court with you. Is that true? So Molly sent this, and Letitia says, she's lying. I never went to court because there was no case. Yes, I remember her. She's lying. I knew it. I just wanted you to know. Daily, I'm fighting for justice for your family. Dre is very much cracking and losing it. Bless you. Thank you so much for everything. But if we did, if we went to court, you and Dre should know. Or you and Dre should have been there because y'all should have been there because y'all were included in that report, remember? Yeah, it's true. So um, I would think that they would have been, at least Dre anyways, would have been notified, right? Because she allegedly gave that, like, backup complaint or whatever. Um, Yeah. So, yeah. And... I find it funny that the one the one thing I just read a few minutes ago, Katie was talking about this like a couple of weeks or a few weeks before it even happened. Actually, I think it's more than a few. No, yeah, about a month or so before it actually happened. I think. So that's funny. Hmm. So yeah, and mind you, this whole thing with this complaint form, the whole thing was was packaged and was trying to be sold as an actual police investigation. So it was a bunch of bullshit, okay? It was premeditated. It was planned. It was intended to be sold and thrown out there as bullshit, okay? Much like the whole death hoax story about how, oh, Molly fucking Justin were behind that. Like, they wouldn't, they don't even know about this shit. Like, not everyone is internet savvy. Like, I'm not even internet savvy. I just happen to see, like, these bullshit news articles aligned with Katie here and there throughout, throughout the years. That's the only reason why I had any foreknow knowledge about it, but that's where it all ends. But funny though, how they were able to jump right on it and sit there and put the blame squarely on Molly and Justin. Hmm, almost like they might've had something to do with it. So again, in my opinion, that's yet another part of this story that was wrapped up and sold as a bunch of bullshit by these shady ass fucking creators, okay? And now here we have Katie attempting to do it again. So I am very reluctant to believe anything she comes up with on this family because right now she, she's she got fucking tunnel vision and that tunnel vision is aimed at nothing more than dragging this family for whatever fucking hateful reason she feels that they need to be dragged for. But she's not judge, jury, and executioner of social media, let alone YouTube. So um, yeah, that's all I have to say about it, I guess. I don't know. So on that note, let me go back to chat. Oh, 
Molly is mostly on Facebook. Um, she does her lives and everything on Facebook. She there is a YouTube channel, but she doesn't really do much with it. Um, I think the only reason why she put something on it this time is because they had to do a bullhorn Betty, and she's she's done with bullhorn Betty. Um, and she just wanted, I think, to because they're they were both so so big on YouTube and Bullhorn Betty still is. I think that that's why she wanted to put on YouTube. But for the most part, she's just on Facebook. Um, she does her live streams there. She does, I mean, she's really active on there. She's, I mean, if you if you enjoyed any of her content before, you should definitely follow her on Facebook. Um, here, I can put her, her link in here. All right, there we go. So yeah, here's a link to her Facebook page. Oops, sorry, just right in front of the microphone. What the hell? What are you doing, fucking computer? I didn't hit that. I don't want to see the. Okay. All right, there you go. Let's try this again. Don't fall that time. Oh, she's on kick and also, okay, yeah. I know she was. I just, I don't really fuck around with kick anymore, so. Yeah, so plan was made a month ahead. KJ just had to find someone stupid enough to believe her lies. Yeah, pretty much. And, well, she didn't. Some of the content creators there on YouTube who fucking. Well, I don't, actually, you know, I don't think that they were stupid enough to believe her lies. I think that they knew that they were lies and they signed on for it. That's my opinion anyway. Especially since, um. There's been no retraction made. There's been no apology made. There's been no admittance that, you know, like we fucked up. We believe this bullshit, especially since one of them in particular just decided to just quietly hide shit. Like people are just going to forget all about it. Like people didn't already download the fucking videos and the live streams and even the live chat. So just say it. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's what started it all. You're right, DC. Molly says she couldn't verify a claim Katie made about DSS and the family didn't feel comfortable talking to Katie, but did talking to Molly. That's how the whole thing started. I watched it unfold. Yep. I remember that stream too. When, when Molly's just like, we just can't confirm anything. So we're not going to be reporting this. We can't confirm it. Just saying. And oof. Wait. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Like that, that is legit. That's exactly what happened. That and at the same time, um, Katie was taking certain liberties with her communications with Letitia. See, when Molly shared her communications with Letitia, it's usually because but Letitia knew she was live and communicating with her throughout the live. So obviously she's cool with the shit being shared. You know, she's participating, just doing it from a text standpoint. Um, but with Katie, it was all done, you know, private DMs are done not throughout a live, not done with under that their context. But Katie just felt like she was entitled to share this shit and to share whatever the fuck she wanted, really. And I mean, sure, maybe, I mean, there's no legal ramifications or whatever, but I mean, come on. So because of that, Letitia was like, I don't really trust this chick, you know? So Letitia was kind of pulling back a little bit. Well, Katie wasn't having it. Katie was like, how dare you? How dare you talk to Marissa, but not me? How dare you do these? How dare you tell me you don't want me to post this or whatever? Like Molly does this. Molly does that. Nobody says anything to Molly. Like the mother's grieving the loss of her fucking kid. And here's Katie saying, well, Molly gets to do it. Like literally. That's not even an exaggeration. That's literally what she was doing. She was in DMs with Letitia singing exactly that. That's fucked up. Okay. So that it was between Letitia pulling back and Katie suddenly hating Molly because Molly couldn't confirm. That's exactly what happened.
Ja, she... I will say this much, though. She did request um, the police report or whatever. See, here's what I don't get. I remember when Katie was first dreaming about this, and she said that she was trying to make it seem or give the impression that the police department was not cooperating with the family because she said that she was able to request the police report with, you know, about Marvan. And the, the police station was like, okay. Uh, but Letitia, she says that Letitia had to prove that she was the mother. Well, the thing is, is that the police report wasn't yet released. Okay, when Letitia requested it. So I think that that's why Letitia had a proof that she was, you know, someone with a personal interest or whatever for that to be considered. But either way, Katie made made a request for it, but it was Letitia who was kind enough to share it with Katie. That's how Katie obtained it and how Katie put it out. But of course, Katie put her fucking water stamp all over her purse, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there's a. I've been paying attention to some of Dre's lives lately. Like, I, I gotta finish what I started covering that. I gotta put shit together, put it out. Um, I don't know when it's gonna be. Hopefully soon. Hopefully I start feeling better soon. This fucking ridiculous. Oh, I, you know, I want to check on the pharmacy again too. But um, yeah, I want to make this a quick live because I have to work today and I have a bunch to do. But it just dawned on me how we all watched Katie do this before. So why the fuck? None of us should be surprised, really. I'm sorry, but we shouldn't be surprised. M myself included. So, but yeah, that's all I got for today. Um, Yeah, I won't be streaming later. Don't think I'll be streaming tomorrow either because of my hours, but maybe it's Saturday night. I don't know. We'll see. But anyways, thanks for being here, everyone. I'm going to talk to you guys later. I'm going to get going, get some shit done before I have to go to work. Oh, shit. What did I do? Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs>